In Starship Flight 5, SpaceX achieved its most important goal with the booster, returning it to the launch site intact. Now, all eyes are on the Starship. So what's next for the ship? Recently, Elon Musk has dropped some key details that could answer this very question. That's exactly what we're going to explore today. October 13, 2024, marked a historic milestone in aerospace as SpaceX's Starship Flight 5 successfully achieved all its mission objectives. For the first time ever, the Super Heavy booster was successfully caught by the chopsticks at the Starbase launch pad in Texas. It's no exaggeration to say that SpaceX has set one foot into the era of full reusability. In the first three flights, the Starship upper stage was lost during flight. However, Flight 4 was a breakthrough with the Starship performing a soft landing, even though it touched down roughly six kilometers from the target. By Flight 5, equipped with an upgraded heat shield, Starship handled re-entry much more effectively. Footage captured from a buoy camera at the landing zone revealed the spacecraft performing a soft landing in the Gulf of Mexico with remarkable accuracy. It's clear that the upper stage has been hitting higher milestones with each successful flight, so what's SpaceX aiming for in the next mission? In a conversation audio posted on X between Elon Musk and three SpaceX engineers about Flight 5's aftermath and plans for Flight 6, the engineering team shared that their current priority is trying to focus on booster risk reduction versus ship envelope expansion. This means SpaceX will perfect the booster's catch and landing process, and the upper Starship stage will continue performing a soft landing in the Pacific Ocean. The FAA has also approved both Flight 5 and Flight 6 at once, a decision based on the essential similarity in the flight profiles of these two missions. The orbital path remains the same, with minor changes approved for Flight 6 due to minimal differences from Flight 5's plan. While many might think SpaceX is aiming for a ship catch in the next flight, the reality is more complex. At this stage, Starship has yet to complete a full orbital journey, unlike the Super Heavy booster, which only needs to launch Starship into space and return in under 10 minutes. The upper Starship stage requires a much longer journey. To return to Starbase, it would have to cross Mexican territory or the U.S. mainland, one of the biggest regulatory hurdles SpaceX needs to overcome. Getting FAA approval to fly over populated areas is crucial if Starship flights are to become routine and operate as intended. This clearance is needed for SpaceX to pursue its ambitions with NASA's Human Landing System HLS project, deploy the Starlink 5 two satellites, and eventually undertake missions to Mars. With Starship's massive size, any scenario where debris could fall on populated areas would be catastrophic. That's why for Flight 6, SpaceX will focus on the ability to reignite the Raptor engines in space, an essential step to to ensure precise orbital maneuvers. So for Flight 6, SpaceX will conduct an in-flight engine relight, along with a controlled soft landing, a virtual catch over the ocean. In fact, SpaceX originally intended to test an engine relight on Flight 3 to demonstrate Starship's capability for course correction or deceleration in space. However, due to stability issues during re-entry, this test had to be canceled. For the next two flights, Flight 4 and Flight 5, SpaceX set aside the engine relight test to focus on improving booster control and refining the re-entry process. Relighting the engines in space is crucial for the full range of Starship missions. When a spacecraft can reliably restart its engine engines multiple times during an orbital journey, it unlocks the potential for complex in-space maneuvers, approaching and docking with other spacecraft, making real-time orbital adjustments, and executing major trajectory changes, all essential steps for future interplanetary missions. The ability to relight the engines in space and perform precise soft landings could pave the way for Starship's eventual return to land. Musk even mentioned the possibility of a catch for Starship in early 2025. So. When can we expect to see a Starship catch? Let's break down the technical factors and development roadmap to get a realistic picture. First off, catching the upper stage of Starship isn't feasible with the current V1 version. The primary limitation lies in the design of the flap system, an aerodynamic control component that's critical during landing. The current flap design isn't yet capable of providing the level of precision needed for a controlled and safe landing. SpaceX is well aware of this and has been developing the V2 version with significant upgrades, expected to debut on Flight 7 early next year. But does that mean we'll see a catch attempt in Flight 7? No, not that fast. While V2 is designed with improvements to boost landing precision and safety, any changes to the design can affect the spacecraft's aerodynamics during re-entry. Each enhancement needs thorough validation, so V2 will need to reprove all the milestones that V1 has already achieved. This means Flight 7 will still land in the ocean. For Flight 8, Starship might attempt a full orbital mission, but again, it'll be a controlled splashdown. However, each landing's accuracy must improve significantly, reaching near-perfect precision before SpaceX can consider an 
actual catch. Given these factors, my personal estimate is that Flight 9 could be the earliest we might hope for a successful catch attempt, assuming all prior test flights hit their targets. This is the most optimistic forecast. So, what about you? When do you think we'll witness the first ever catch of the upper stage? Share your thoughts in the comments below. One thing is certain, though. Before we can see a full return to launch site, RTLS landing with Starship, SpaceX still has a series of complex technical challenges to overcome. This process demands rigorous testing to ensure seamless coordination between Starship and the Mechazilla arms. Much like the approach used with the Super Heavy booster, SpaceX will need to conduct impact tests to assess stress on the vehicle's structure and precisely control the force applied by the mechanical arms during contact. And remember, Starship has a unique challenge that Super Heavy doesn't, the heat shield. This difference requires extreme precision when catching the ship. As Starship comes in for a vertical landing, any scraping or misalignment from the robotic arms could peel off its heat-resistant tiles, an unacceptable risk. SpaceX is currently exploring the option of removing some heat shield tiles along the sides of Starship, the areas that would make direct contact with the robotic catch arms. These sections, in principle, don't face much exposure to plasma during re-entry. However, even with this adjustment, the risk remains that the chopsticks could still damage the heat shield. For this reason, it's likely that SpaceX will need to develop additional hardware solutions to protect the heat shield from the impact of the robotic arms. These technical challenges highlight why developing a fully reusable spacecraft recovery system requires time and meticulous attention to detail. Elon Musk recently commented on X, saying there's a good chance that Starship achieves full-stack reusability in 2020 which is the critical breakthrough needed to make life multiplanetary. This means SpaceX is aiming to refly both the booster and the upper stage next year. But to be honest, that timeline seems a bit optimistic. No matter what, SpaceX is pushing full speed ahead. For the upcoming Flight 6, this will be the first mission free from the legal hurdles of the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. With that clearance, therefore, SpaceX is making the most of the time frame and being more proactive in launch planning. Preparations for Flight 6 are advancing rapidly. Ship 13 and Booster 31 have essentially completed their individual tests, and engineers are now in the final stages of readying both vehicles for integrated testing, a critical last step before an actual launch. According to the scheduled plan, Flight 6 will take place on the 18th of this month, just around the corner. Alongside Flight 6 preparations, SpaceX is also ramping up infrastructure development. At Starbase, Texas, construction on the second launch tower is moving forward at full speed, focusing on installing a new orbital launch mount OLM. At the same time, the company is also conducting tests with the Raptor 3, their most advanced generation of engines, promising significant improvements in performance and reliability. Looking ahead, Elon Musk has mapped out a vision for a four-tower launch system, two at Starbase, Texas, and two in Florida. This strategy reflects SpaceX's ambition to set up a high-frequency launch capability, initially to meet the needs of the Artemis III mission. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.